Mm, boy, yeah, the name is Slack. Thanks for coming back. Let's walk this more Cyberpunk 2077. This is a howitzer cannon. This is the Comrade's Hammer. If you had to choose between one or the other, I'd go with the Comrade's Hammer. <laughs> what is the Comrade's Hammer? Well, in your travels, you may have found a tech revolver called the RT-46 Buria. They're all over the place. They're tech revolvers that pack a big punch can shoot through walls or any other obstacle for that matter and unlike other tech weapons they don't need charging just plug and play the comrades hammer is the iconic version of the rt-46 buria bigger badder and can be improved to legendary with four mod slots and it does ridiculously insane overpowered headshot damage craft yourself a legendary version of one of these and it will take you straight through to the end of the game hell even an epic version will take you straight through to the end of the game a couple of drawbacks with the Comrade's Hammer 1, there's no muzzle slot, so it can't be silenced, which means you're committing yourself to very, very loud gameplay. There's no stealth here, none whatsoever. And two, the Comrade's Hammer only has one bullet in the clip, which actually works to, to your advantage, I'll explain about that later, but it does mean that it needs reloading after every single shot. Those two combined, loud gameplay and uh, reloading after every game, every shot rather, can make for some rather airy gameplay, ass. even if this thing can pretty much one shot most enemies. So what you're looking at here is initiating full on combat mode in every encounter as soon as you take the first shot. Then gameplay boils down to you frantically reloading while deciding what your next target will be and then hoping you don't miss because that means reloading again while the enemy you miss is plugging you full of holes. Oh sure, there are perks and gear that will improve your reload speed, but they're, they're really not worth a damn. I found the one thing that made the Comrade's Hammer build a thousand percent better was to simply have three of them instead of one. Then you fill all three of your weapon slots with a Comrade's Hammer and instead of reloading, simply swap weapons which is way faster than reloading. This will allow you to take three quick shots before having to do any reloading. I haven't seen anybody talk about this. I don't know why, as it's a really kick-ass way of using the Comrade's Hammer. All I see are videos about doing, you know, half a million damage with level 50 characters. Um, with all due respect, I've never found level cap builds useful. I'm always far more interested in what you can accomplish much earlier on in the game. And that's what this video is all about. This video will cover Comrade's Hammer builds starting from character level 7 all the way through to level 31. Level 7 is the very earliest you can start using the Comrade's Hammer. Level 31 is the very earliest you can create epic quality mods that will go in the Comrade's Hammer, hopefully a legendary at this point. When I created my prototype level 16 Comrade's Hammer build uh, for this video, for the purpose of creating this video, I decided that I wasn't just going to, you know, make the build and show you all the damage related perks and you know just leave you on your own to, you know just here you go go for it I decided no no I decided that I was going to use exclusively the comrades hammer to plow through 15 character levels to get the full comrades hammer experience and uh, it was a real learning experience and that's what I'm going to show you in this video, everything that um, I learned along the way. This is basically the guinea pigs mission. This is a mission rated very high. It's in the city center uh, location. And this is what I focused exclusively on as I went from level 16 to level 31 with the Comrades Hammer. I focused exclusively on missions rated very high. And this got you a lot of XP and a lot of street cred and level up my street cred to level 50, max it out. Um, but I also got a lot of money. This, uh, you see all the items here that um, are on the ground here. All these items, they're all like, like rated at level 37. Yeah, all around level 37. This is, this is basically me at level 21 and I'm taking on what is essentially a level 37 mission. I can't even use any items that I'm picking up. But yeah, basically the game's saying you shouldn't be here. You know, if you're at level 21, you shouldn't be here. And it's true. If like you know, if I just went running and gunning with these guys, they would chew me to pieces in the New York minute. But I found that the biggest um, advantage of taking on all these high-level missions was 
the stuff you pick up, even though you can't use any of it, you can't use any of it for like 15 or 16 levels. Um, it's worth a lot of money. And this uh, helped make up for the fact that none of the access points that I was encountering in these very high missions, um, I couldn't do any of them because they required a tech level of tech level 9, tech level 10, that sort of thing. I couldn't do any of them. But I found I was making way more money selling the loot. Let me just uh, pause for this. Yeah, see, watch this. This gig pays 10,000 bucks on top of all the loot that I collected. I'm going to show you where I started out here. 38,000 bucks here. Now I'm going to collect all the loot. Like I said, all the loot is level 37. And after selling off all the loot, I'm going to show you what I came up with here. This was, uh, this was insane. I stopped doing access points altogether because it's like, what? Who needs access points? You know? Just going to these very high missions. Gun them all down with the comrade's hammer. If you're see see all these, uh, I can't use any of these others, but they're all they're all worth a pretty penny. Worth like five hundred, six hundred, sometimes a thousand, sometimes two thousand bucks. You sell them all off. Here you go. See, check this out. Level thirty-seven, level thirty-seven, all the way down the line. There we go. So I made 17,000 bucks on one mission. One mission alone. That's it. So, yeah. That's what you do with the Comrade's Hammer. Go straight to those very high missions. Those missions rated very high. And start plowing through. They make them a lot of money. You make a lot of street cred. And um, you'll level up fast. Here is my Comrade's Hammer run at level 29. I now have three legendary Comrade's Hammers. They've all been only upgraded once and they're still doing ridiculous damage. This is the Gimme Danger mission using the three quick shot strategy to take out the three biggest threats right off the bat. And I noticed that if you do point blank headshots, that's how you get those massive damage numbers. Take us at 40,000 damage. Want to see that again? This is like way more than you need. You don't need 40,000 damage to take this guy out. 40,000 damage. That's insane. Here we go, another one, 37,000, 33,000, 42,000. And here I'm using a quick, three quick shot strategy to help me out when I keep miss this guy. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Three times a charm. Yeah, those three quick shots really help out. Also notice that the, the projectile launcher is a great backup weapon. If you miss or if you just want to finish off a run, projectile launcher. Check that out. Miss, projectile launcher. Also, flash bangs work great if you're not very good at aiming. Throw a flash bang, get it right up close, do some time, do that massive headshot. Check it out again. Flash bang, incapacitates him, get it right up close, do that massive headshot. And Kariznikov, activate bullet time for a couple seconds, works fantastic as well with the Comrade's Hammer. Run up close, do a slide, aim your gun, and you go into bullet time for a couple seconds. Check this out, and oh yeah, who's your daddy? And finally, um, you know, if all else fails, just do a quick wrap on the noggin, and then that may give you enough time to finish him up. Keep in mind that uh, the Comrade's Hammer also does explosive damage. That means multiple kills with just one shot. There's a double kill. Here's a triple kill. Coming up is, I'm pretty sure it's quintuple kill. Check this out. Wait a minute, hold up here. Let's see that again in slow motion. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Boom! And hold on, hold on here, hold on, and... Freeze frame. Right there, I see five distinct critical hit damage numbers. That's a quintuple kill. <laughs> That's a quintuple kill, people. <laughs> Anyways, enough of the fun and games. Let's get right into the build. Major Slack. All right, let's start off with the basics. The Comrade's Hammer, you cannot buy it, you cannot find it. You have to make it yourself. And in order to make it, you're gonna need the crafting spec. The crafting spec can be found in Arroyo. I'm gonna show you exactly where it is. Bring up your map, press the filter button four times to switch it over to open world. Two, three, four, open world. Zoom out all the way, okay? And you have to be in act two in order to get it, okay? You have to be like, you know, completely finished act one and 
the lockdown is lifted and you can now go anywhere in the game. All right. Now you're looking for Haywood. There is Haywood. Zoom in right here, right next to Haywood. Zoom out. Wait a minute. Sorry. Haywood. Right next to Haywood is Santo Domingo. Zoom in on Santo Domingo. Split up into two districts. Arroyo and Rancho Coronado is Arroyo that you want. All right. Zoom in and it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. It's that blue skull right there. It's the only suspected organized crime activity in Arroyo. All right. That's exactly where the crafting spec for the Comrade's Hammer is. It's on a boss enemy in this um, scanner hustle job. Now, as you can see, it's rated as very high. You have to be, be prepared to take this on. If you want a complete walkthrough on how to do this, check out part 32 of my multi-build power start. I'm going to show you how to get the crafting spec for the Comrade's Hammer with only the smart rifle that you get from Royce in the heist mission. Okay, you don't really have to be high level to get it. If you just use some smarts and a smart rifle and made your slack on your back, you can get it. No problem. Okay, check it out once again. Part 32. Next. Once you have the crafting spec, you can go into your crafting uh menu and you're gonna find it right there comrade's hammer okay it starts out at epic it's an iconic weapon that means that you can craft it and then that means you can immediately craft the next higher quality after that all right so we can start out with an epic and then after we craft the epic you can you'll then get an option to craft a legendary of course for legendary you're gonna need a higher perk but for epic we're gonna need at least the grease monkey perk all right, so in order to even craft the Comrade's Hammer, you have to have the Grease Monkey perk. Go to your character and then go to Technical Ability, go to Crafting, and here you're gonna see the Grease Monkey perk right there. Now, as you can see, the Grease Monkey perk requires you to have Attribute Level 12 for Technical Ability, all right? So this means that the very earliest, if you started out with like the most optimal build right at the very beginning of the game, you're going for the Comrade's Hammer build and you put three points into technical ability right away, which will bring it up to six. And then every level up that you did from level one to level seven, you put another point into technical ability to bring it up to level 12, technical ability up to level 12. At that point, you get the Grease Monkey perk. So therefore the very, very earliest that you can make a Comrade's Hammer is level seven. Now, um, I wouldn't recommend that. That's not really optimal. Just being able to make the Comrade's Hammer um, is is not enough. Well, I mean, you know, you could use it, but you know, it's you're going to be missing a lot of important perks. One of the most important perks that goes with the Comrade's Hammer is here in handguns. All right, so go to reflexes, handguns, and right down here. This is what really sets off the Comrade's Hammer because it's only got one bullet in the clip. It's always firing the last round. And the grand finale perk gives you double, count them, double damage for every single shot. So alt optimally, what you want is you want technical ability up to 12 and you want reflexes up to 12. And on top of that, this is not really essential, but you're eventually gonna want it because it makes a big difference. You're gonna want body, up to six. Why? Because let me just show you if I have an example of an RT46 Buria. Pretty sure I do have one. RT46 Buria is the exact same thing. There's one right there. Here you go, you can see it has a little like required sticker on it. You can still equip it, you can still use it. As you can see, V is, has it equipped. Let's go outside, we have it equipped, we can still use it. But it's got a little warning on it saying, full potential unlocked at body six. What does that mean? It's like that means that it has such a ridiculous recoil that you won't be able to use it in a crouching position you'll have to use it standing up. If you try to use it in a crouching position, the recoil will kick you back into a standing up position and it's gonna throw off your aim. Your accuracy is gonna be thrown off. So opt optimally, you also want body at six as, as well as tech at 12 
and reflexes at 12. All right, just to quickly demonstrate this, let's go somewhere where we can pop this off. Pop a shot off somewhere. How about some remote place like right here, Longshore North? Okay, here we are, Longshore North. Let's see if you can find some secluded area where you can pop off a couple shots without upsetting the authorities. I think this is fairly safe here. Okay, now, using the RT-46 Buria, we don't have body at 6. It's only at 3. If we try to fire the weapon from a crouching position, look in the bottom right corner of the screen, you see my icon is crouching, standing, crouching. There we go. So watch what happens when we fire off a shot. Boom. See that? The recoil is so freaking ridiculous that it pops us back up into a standing position. Also knocks us out back a bit, plus throws off your aim. Okay, try that again, go down the crouch, and see that? So that's what you're looking at. That's why you want to get body up to six in order to optimally use the comrade's hammer. Another thing, let's just do that right now just for demonstrational purposes. Let's put body up to six, five, and six. Okay, so now body's up to six. We no longer have the warning on the RTC, RT-46 Buria, the same thing will happen when you do that with the Comrade's Hammer. And now we can fire from a crouching position. No problem, see? No problem. Now, another thing, the sight. The sight on the RT-46 Buria is exact, exactly the same as a Comrade's Hammer. It's off. See, it's kind of like, it's got a, see that? If you can see this in the video, it's kind of got a holographic sight. That's not accurate. It's actually the iron sight on the weapon that is the most accurate. So for example, let's say we wanted to, let's find a mark here. See this P here? There's a P, I don't know what that says, something or other. But if we aimed right at the center of the P, let's find something else. Um, There, see that smudge right there? Let's try to aim right at that smudge. Actually, you can't see it because of the holographic sight. If you're gonna find something else. Uh, here, how about the top? This is like I'm presuming an apple, the stem of the apple. We're gonna aim at the very top of the stem of the apple, okay? Using the sight. See that? It's lower. See that? It's lower. So the sight is off. What it actually is, it's the iron sight. So just imagine that the holographic sight doesn't exist. It's the actually the iron sight that is the proper sight. So just imagine in between the holographic sight and the end of the gun, that's exactly where to aim. So I, if I were to aim at, say, this thing right here. No, let's find something here. See this, this mark right there? That mark right there? It would be here, not there, here. All right, let's see if we can nail that right on. That's incorrect. That's correct, see, I nailed it right on. See, so that's important when you're doing headshots that you know how to use the sight. The sight's glitchy, it's off. It's not the holographic sight. Just imagine it's the iron sight, All right? So there is your comrade's hammer combat basics, next. We are going to create the Comrade's Hammer build using the multi-build power start. We're going to start at level 16. The multi-build power start is where we went through all of Act 1 and a little bit of Act 2, and we did spend any attribute points whatsoever except one, so we saved every single attribute points. We have 14 attribute points, and we got a ton of perk points, 23 perk points. Want to see how I did this? Check out my multi-build power start playlist. I got a walkthrough showing exactly how I did this from new game up to this point here, all right? Now, your mileage may vary, but this is what we're gonna do. So as I as I explained before, we need technical at ability at the very least up to 12. So let's put seven points into technical ability. Now we got up to 12, and now we can craft a comrade's hammer. So let's get the grease monkey perk, this is essential. And if you wanna craft some this isn't really essential for uh, like rare mods. You don't really need that as I explained in an earlier video, but you may want to craft rare max docks, which will heal you for 60% of your health instead of the uncommon max docks, which heal you for 
40 percent of your health and those are very useful especially when you're taking on the very high missions and those you absolutely need the true craftsman perk to get so we're gonna get that and this here as um you're disassembling a lot of components um you may have already done this if you're like if you followed my early armor build but just to reiterate if you um are going to be cranking out a lot of mods for your armor or for your comrade's hammer you're going to be disassembling a lot of mods that you can't use because they're just lower quality and as you're disassembling you're going to want to get more components back so get the mechanic perk okay so those three perks mechanic true craftsman and grease monkey this is something i got earlier i explained that in the multi-build power start all right so now that we've got all that it's time to create our comrade's hammer and we simply need enough parts to do this so go to crafting here we go click on that and it looks like i'm 44 epic items short your mileage may vary but that's what i need so basically just go to a gun shop and buy some parts we have tons of money we can afford it um, there's a gun shop down there, I know, but he's tied up with the shoot to thrill mission, so instead of doing that mission, let's just, um, which only rewards you with, a uh, Epic Lexington, if I recall correctly. Let's go, just go downtown to Kabuki Market and we'll buy some parts there. Alright, when you land at Kabuki Market, turn to the right, round down here, and you're looking for the next double yellow panel. There's the next double yellow panel, jumping between them, over the bench. And you find yourself the gun shop right here. Into the gun shop you go. And buy yourself whatever parts you need We're to create your line. comrade's hammer. I need 44 epic item components. I'm just going to buy the entire batch of 50. There we go. And now we can create a comrade's hammer. But wait, what, but, but, wait, wait, wait. Before you do anything, save the game. Alright, definitely save the game. Why is that? Because... You want the very best stats on your comrade's hammer. They don't all craft the same. As you can see, it's uh, the fog of crafting has been lifted, if you will. So now we can craft it. We got everything we need. All right. Here's all the stats. Um, it says the crafted item will gain a random stat of crit chance. That's correct. Crit damage. That's correct. Bleeding chance. That's incorrect. It always spawns with burn chance bleeding poison shock non-existent it always spawns with burn chance um so random crit dance random crit damage random charge multiplier but that's completely non-applicable even though it may spawn with a charge multiplier charge multiplier stat it doesn't apply to this weapon because you don't need to charge it it never charges so and charge time I've never seen a spawn with that, but once again, it's not applicable. All right, so the ones you're looking for is crit chance, crit damage, and headshot damage to be in there somewhere. Headshot multiplier. Not listed, but it should be there. This definitely spawns with a headshot multiplier stat, which is also completely random. Down here, thermal damage. It always spawns with thermal damage, and it's always the same number. At level 16, is going to be around... 214 if I recall correctly all right so that's what it boils down to what you want is the very best crit chance and the very very best crit damage stat that you can muster up and at level 16 with what we got going on here that will be approximately 32 percent for crit chance and 30 and 64 percent for crit damage my exact numbers were 32.04 for crit chance and 64.07 for crit damage. That's the best you're going to do at level 16. So you're aiming for that. All right. Now, this is what you're going to do. You're just simply going to craft one. Go look in your inventory. See what you got. There we go. And as you see, I got 16% crit damage, crit chance, 31% crit damage. This is what I call the half speed model you don't want this i got a good headshot multiplier but you don't want that that's like this is like half speed so basically go out reload the game that's all you have to do and try again otherwise known as re-rolling this is going to make a big difference 
especially when we're going for 100% crit chance, which we can easily do right now. Believe it or not, at level 16, you can get 100% crit chance with the comrade hand, comrade's hand. Once you stack all the all the crit chance, okay. So once again, just for demonstrational purposes, let's try again, craft again, see what we got this time. Inventory, backpack, weapons, and this time we got same thing, half speed. We only got half the maximum crit chance that we can get and half the crit damage. Now. Um, just to tell you what your odds are, at level 16, the chances of getting the optimal um, Comrade's Hammer, which like I said would be 32% crit chance, 64% crit damage, is approximately 7%? Let me check out my notes here. It was 2 out of 25. Yep, 2 out of 25 rolls. So around 7%, that's what you're looking at, okay? So that's what, if you're not getting it, just keep trying again and trying again, all right? Now I already have a save uh, ready to go. Yeah, I did all the, uh, the crafting off screen or off camera, and I'm just gonna load that save and show you the optimal Comrade's Hammer that you can get at this point. There you go, Epic Comrade's Hammer, level 16. As you see, 32.72 crit chance, 64% crit damage and the headshot multiplayer only got two you could I mean if like the absolute very 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 best you could get would be 32% crit chance 64% crit damage and three headshot multiplier but I've never gotten that it's it's actually possible I've done it like when crafting legendaries to get the very best headshot damage multiplier plus the best crit chance the best crit damage but I've never done it with an epic so I think the chances of that are really rare. I usually settle for the best crit chance and the best crit damage. All right, so now that we've done that, we're gonna start working on, pardon me, getting 100% crit chance. And let me just explain how crit chance stacks up and or sources. All right, so we've got, let me just equip this. Here we go. Now, um, that's another thing I should mention. The crit chance you see on the Comrade's Hammer here, this is what I call backpack stats. It's because it's in your backpack. Once you equip a weapon and draw a weapon, you may get like bonuses from other sources, which will be basically your drawn stats. This is different. So this is what I call backpack stats. Once the exact stats that a weapon has, put it in your backpack, right? So we're going to quit this and there we go. Now crit chance. We want to get this up to 100%. 100% means we're doing a critical hit every single time, right? The way critical hits work uh, with chances is you start out with 1%. Like right now, if you want to see what your critical hit chances for your stat screen, this is like basic critical hit chances. Go to the main menu and then hover over character and you see stats, bring that up. And there, as you can see, I have 40% crit chance currently going on with this character. And then explain to you exactly where that 40% is coming from. First of all, everyone gets 1% default crit chance right away. Next, you get 2% crit chance, or rather 1% crit chance for every level of reflexes that is over the basic. So you start out with reflexes at um, a base level of three. And we have reflexes at five so we're getting two percent crit chance from that so now we're up to three percent now hopefully everybody found an example of the fortuna mod when we went on the uh, 25 legendary armor run i showed you that i found three of them so i'm sure everybody's found at least one fortuna mod in one of the legendary armors and i have it right here okay there's a fortuna mod and it gives 15% crit chance and that will show you show on your stats screen. So now we're up to 18%. Earlier on in the multi-build power start, I had you buy weak spot detection, which is a cyberware mod and put it in the Kuroshi optics. Okay, it's a mod that goes right there, weak spot detection that increases crit chance by 5%. Okay, so now we're up to 318, 23%. Next, also in Cyberware, I had everybody buy during the multi-build power start the Limbic System Enhancement. 
this gives you another 7% crit chance. All right, so now we're like default one, reflex is two, that's three. Fortuna, that's 18, weak spot, that's 23. Limbic system, that's 30, all right? And finally, also during the multi-build power start, I had everybody use the katana. I believe it's called the black unicorn. It also works with the machete. But use the, the katana or the black unicorn to get decapitating kills. And you get about maybe a dozen decapitating kills. And even if you don't have any perks in cold blood, you can level up cold blood to level two. And doing that gives you 10% crit chance across the board. Okay, so there's my 40% crit chance. And I'm going to list it all right here so you can see a review of that. Okay, that's how I'm getting 40% crit chance. Now, that 40% stacks on top of what we're getting from our comrades hammer that comes out to 72.72% crit chance. We need 28 more percent crit chance. I'm going to show you exactly how to get this. With tactical ability at the current level that we have now, we could get in tactical ability engineering. This one right here, lightning bolt increases crit chance with tech weapons by 3%. Um, I'll talk about this later about whether you may want to get this or not because what's going to happen later on in this build as you develop build you're going to have you're going to come up with a surplus of crit chance and some of these crit chance perks require three perk points in order to get a certain amount of crit chance and you may not want to do that it all depends on whether you want to wait to get 100% crit chance or you want to have it right now I'm going to assume that you want 100% crit chance right now all right, so I recommend that you get all three points here in Lightning Bolt. So that's one, two, three. All right, and this will show in your stats screen as long as you have a tech weapon equipped and drawn. Okay, so go back out. Our weapon is not drawn. Bring out your weapon. And I cannot draw my weapon. Why is that? There we go. <laughs> I hate thinking when the game glitches out, you keep wondering, is this a glitch or is this something new about the game that I don't understand? Okay, my weapon is drawn. That means we're getting the bonus from... Lightning Bolt increases crit chance with tech weapons by 10%. It will only show if you got a tech weapon equipped and drawn. So go down here, and as you can see, our crit chance has now increased to 50. So now we're at 82. We need 18 more percent. Um, we can, and we want to do this anyways, increase reflexes up to 12. The reason being, as I explained earlier, is we want to get the grand finale perk. All right, so we have to put reflexes up to 12. In the process of doing that, we're going to get 1% of crit chance for every attribute that we add to reflex, with the exception of level eight. Why? It's like, because the game's a fucking cheater. Don't ask me why the game just cheats you out of 1% crit chance at level eight. Let's catch it in the act right now, okay? This crit chance is going to show up on your stats screen, okay? So stats, here we are at 50. Let's add one attribute point two reflexes boom go back to stats we're at 51 let's add another point two reflexes boom go back to stats and we are correctly at level 52 percent crit chance let's go back to reflexes add another one reflexes eight let's go back to stats and and busted busted where's my crit chance game Huh? <coughs> Bullshit! Bullshit! <coughs> Bullshit! Yeah, it, it rips you off. Just, I have no, there is no logical explanation for this whatsoever. I, I mean, I challenge you to, to explain that. At why should it skip level 8? I don't see why. There's no logical reason. Especially when you go back to give it another point here, level level nine reflexes and let's go back to stats again and now it's behaving like normal it's giving you one percent crit chance for every 
attribute point you add. So let's just bring it up to um, level 12. We're going to add three more points to re reflexes. That means it should be up to 56% crit chance. So one, two, three. That's all our attribute points spent. And let's check it out. And as you can see, it is correctly at 56%. All right, so 56% added on to our 32. We are now at uh, 56 and 32, 88. We need 12 more percent, All right? Now, go to reflexes, handguns, and you're gonna see right there, high noon. Increases crit chance with pistols and revolvers by 4%. Now, um, once again, just to explain you your options here. This will bring us up to 100%, okay? Just to explain your options here. If you go back out, technical ability, engineering, right here, you'll see, my bad. It's at in handguns right here, Westworld. This particular perk, which you can only get at level 16 reflexes, Increases crit chance for pistols and revolvers by 10% if fully modded, which is really easy to do. But like I said, um, you'll have to wait until you get to level 16 in order to get this perk. If you want 100% crit chance right now, um, spend a couple extra perks to get high noon. If you want to wait, you can get that because you're eventually going to get that anyways. You're going you're gonna to have a fully modded weapon, all right? But, um, you know, like for me, Personally, if you want my advice, don't worry about perk points. Perk points are coming out of your freaking ears in this game. They're all over the place. You don't have to be stingy with perk points. So go for that 100% crit chance right now. So that's what I'm going to do. One, two, and three. And this is going to show up on your weapon, if I recall correctly. So go back here. Our weapon is drawn. And as you can see, we increased our crit chance from 32% to 44%. So there we go. 44% plus... 56% on the stack screen, and we just did it. We cracked 100% crit chance. That means that every single shot we take with our comet hammer is going to be a critical hit. Done. Next, let's get all the other perks that we can get to just, you know, really pump this sucker up. What else can we get? Um, got a nice list here. Starting off with, of course, all the handguns perks. Definitely want to get Grand Finale of the last round and a pistol or revolver clip deals double damage. Definitely want that. Next, Gunslinger. This will reduce the reload time by 30%. Uh, like I said earlier, I, I really don't find it's worth a damn. I mean, you know, it, it is 30%, but it's not going to... Anyways, I would get it. Definitely. Because Comrade's Hammer reloads really slowly. Next, long shot drop pop. Uh, most of your shots are going to be at a distance, especially if you're like playing behind cover with your early Comrade's Hammer build. So definitely get this. Increases damage with pistols and revolvers to enemies 5 meters away by 15% for the first perk and 25% for the second one. So two perk points into that. Next, Desperado. This is just straight damage increase. Increases damage with pistols by 3% for the first perk, 6% for the second perk, and 10% for the third perk. Let's get all three. Doesn't seem like much, but what the hell, it's a straight damage increase. Next, Fistful of Euro Dollars, right here. Increases crit damage with pistols and revolvers by 10%. This is a no-brainer. Here, we just um, fashioned our Comrade's Hammer to do 100% critical hits, so Hey, why not get 20% extra crit damage, right? So, a couple of points in there. And the last three points. This is... Okay, if you want my advice, a lot of people are going to say throw it into um, Rio Bravo. I disagree. This in like, okay, three points, like three perk points. Increases headshot damage multiplier with pistols and revolvers by 10%. Let me explain exactly what this 10% means. It's not like, you know, it takes your current headshot damage multiplier and in like increases that by 10, 20 or 30%. It kind of adds on to it. If we go back here and we look at our comrades hammer, you see we have it says two headshot damage multiplier. 
basically that's 200% headshot damage. If you spend three, count them, three perk points in here. Let me just show you what happens. This is a real ripoff and I really didn't like it. And I, I always wait till the very end of the game before I spend these three perk points here. I'm going to save the game here. Do a quick save. Because I don't want to do this. I just want to, you know. Okay, so you saw that the headshot damage multiplier is two. Watch what happens when we get this perk. Ready to get all three? Okay, now let's check out our headshot damage multiplier. And it is at 2.3. What? Yeah, 2.3. So now instead of doing 200% headshot damage, you're doing 230% headshot damage. In fact, it increases your headshot damage by a total of 15%, not 30%, which I don't think is worth it. I think that it's a lot better idea. Let me just reload the game. At this point, this is especially true if you're playing on the console and you're not going to be relying on headshots a lot. You know, it's really hard to aim on the console. You're just going to be happy to hit the guy, let alone do a headshot, you know? Headshots are for like stealth builds when you really have the time to take your time or really line up a headshot. With the Comrade's Hammer, forget about it. You're going to be popping off those shots like nobody's business. So just, you know, aim for center mass, people. I would say instead, go for this one. Increases damage to limbs. by It was going to be 15% when you once get both perks, but this is well worth it. This is well worth it. So that's where I would put my points. You may think differently, but that's where I put my points. Unless you really, really got a hard on for, pardon my language, for, for headshot damage. This is where I would put my points. So one, two, in there. And finally, we got one perk point left. This is going to help out a lot when um, you're going into combat and you got those pesky net runners coming at you. I would go to, I believe it's quick hack. This one right here. I would definitely get this. Reveals an enemy net runner when they're attempting to hack you. Very useful. And that's how I would spend all my perk points. All right. Um, there is another one that does a, another perk that does apply to Comrade's Hammer. It's here in stealth. You're going to need cool up to seven in order to get it. But this here, this assassin perk, deals 15% more damage to human enemies. There's no other special rules of engagement described there so basically you can get that and use that to your with your comrades hammer build but we only have stealth at three so you know that's that's not really an option but you may want to consider that later on all right so that's all our prick points spent that's all our attribute points spent um we can upgrade the comrades hammer once that's all that the game's going to allow us at level 16, so let's do that. Crafting. Upgrades. Here's our Comrade's Hammer, and I am four epic upgrade components short. Let's go get him. See that I have a do I have a RT? No, I do not. Okay. We're gonna buy some new iron. What did I say? Epic upgrade. Hey there. I need four. This is going to increase our crit chance a little bit and our crit damage a little bit as well. And once you can, uh, once again, you can see that because my weapon is put away, our crit chance dropped. That's why I always step outside so they can draw my weapon so you can see the real. So there is back up to forty-four. All right, now let's upgrade it. It's going to go up to four, about forty-six.
here we go and that's it we're gonna have to go like increase our character level before we can upgrade it again and let's take a little look see and as you can see it did indeed give us a little bit more crit chance and a little bit more crit damage plus more damage all right and now we have two mod slots in our comrade's hammer you could put all kinds of mods in there these are all the mods that we could put you may, you may be thinking the crunch mod which just basically increases the damage but since we're doing 100 percent critical hits it makes much more sense to put the pacifier mod which will increase your overall damage by a lot because it increases your critical hit damage by 10 percent now you want the rare version okay and because of our level we can craft approximately seven percent rares out of all the pacifier mods we craft we have the crafting spec that showed you how to get that in the uh multi-build power started for forget exactly which part it was um i'll try to remember to post um a link in a pinned comment to that where to get the pacifier oh wait that's not something you find that's right that's something you buy let me just show you right now we bought it earlier I've, i did a previous video on armor it's at this weapon shop if you zoom out let me just get rid of this here let's go to service points there we go zoom out here there's haywood city center there's watson city center haywood zoom in on haywood and it's this weapon shop right here that's most likely to have the pacifier crafting spec all right so assuming everybody has that so we got that earlier on in an armor build video pretty sure this guy already has it crafting mods Oh, I don't have it. This particular, uh... Well, okay, let's go down and buy it. Okay, I got the right save loaded up. Here we are at that location that I told you about. This weapon shop right here. Oh, sorry, people. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Put that away. Put that away, B. Oh, my gosh. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, this one has the crafting spec for pacifier. There it is right there. Now, like I said, the chances of getting a rare, all you need is the comet. Like there is no higher quality crafting spec for these mods. You just start out with the comet and it's just a basically a percentage based on your character level. At this level, I figure the chances of getting a rare are about 7%. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I need, um, I found one. In my travel so i'm just going to equip that right away there we go a rare pacifier that's 10 percent crit damage put that in there right away and we're going to craft another one your mileage may vary you may have to craft two of them i'm going to craft let's say 20 in hopes that i get at least one rare one two three four six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty there we go back out game <laughs> can make me do this again eh okay game have it your way I'm recording so you know yeah on your worst behavior let's craft 10 more three four five six seven eight nine ten all right come on now game give it to me add a boy he gives me one measly one rare pacifier after crafting 30 of the suckers anyways that's all we need okay so there we go we got both slots loaded up with the pacifier mod so that's pretty much it that's the build done let me just check my notes here oh wait a minute hold up here krisnikov and also there is a headshot um yeah the legendary trajectory analysis okay so this is where paying back um 
Victor is really going to help out. Let's just check out all our stats here. 46%. 56, that's correct. Alright, so it's down to visit Victor. Victor the Ripper Dock. If you haven't done this already, you've got this mission called... I believe it's called Paid in Full. Right there. Paid in full. If you remember correctly, that way back in the beginning of the game, when you first visited Victor, the Ripper Dock, he gave you some cyberware for free. And you owe him 21,000 bucks. The reason why you would want to pay him back this 21,000 bucks is so that you can access him as a Ripper Dock vendor. And we need to do that because he's got a very important piece of cyberware that we want. So let's go visit Victor. Pay him back 21,000. We got lots of money. Hopefully you do too. From this location there is a fast travel station right here. Victor is at Bradbury and Buren, right downtown at the bottom of Watson. Right there, Bradbury and Buren. Let's go there. Over the fence. Go in and see Victor. And pay him back. I want to pay off my debt. Finally scrounged up enough eddies to pay you back in full. Hold on to him just in case. You need him more than me. I'm not taking him all the way to my grave, Vic. Here. And thanks again for doing so much work on me without ever seeing in any. That's what friends are for. Very good. So now we can do business with him because we paid him back. Let's do business with I was him. thinking about swapping some chrome. You got any new toys? Have a look. First thing you want is an epic Kuroshi, which will give you three mod slots in your ocular system, all right? So we're going to swap this out. Go for the epic. Very simple. Next, go to his trade menu. And you're looking for this thing right here, trajectory analysis. Now, once again, you want to save yourself 20,000 bucks. If you're not very good at headshots, don't buy this. But for me, I'm on the PC version, so I often do headshots. I'm going to buy this. Very much worth it. Increases headshot bonus damage by a whopping 50%. So let's buy that. And what else are we going to buy? Um, let's just back out and equip this right away. Because we have new Kuroshi Optics. Cyberware. It's got three empty mod slots. Don't forget to put in, put that in. There we go. Trajectory analysis. Don't forget to put in your weak spot detection. And finally... This one right here. Threat detector automatically highlights enemies who have detected you. You definitely want enemies highlighted as often as possible when you're using the Comrade Hammer. Right? Next, Karinzikov. This is as I demonstrated earlier, very useful. I was thinking about swapping some chrome. You got any new toys? Have a look. Karinzikov is found in the nervous system? There it is. This right here, Karinzik, I, I didn't bother to look this up or Google it. I'm going to Google it right after I finish. This is something I always forget to do. And I forget, I forget about the, the pronunciation Nazis. They just freak out when you mispronounce something. I'm going to go with Karinzikov. Kar yep. Yeah. That's the best I can do. I'm going to look it up right after. Anyways, allows you to aim and shoot while dodging. That's important. Um, but more importantly, slows down time by 50% for 1.5 seconds when blocking. Yeah. Aiming, yeah, whatever, or attacking during a slide or dodge. That's the important part. Attacking during a slide or dodge. Slide, that's the best one. Run up, slide, aim your weapon, and it slows down time for 50% for 1.5 seconds. Let's definitely get that. It's only 5,000 bucks. And there's another one here, Nano Relays. This one here. This adds an extra point, half a second to a Sandivistan or in Karinzikov duration. Um, 
and we already own it. And there's also um, a rare version right here. We're going to have to get reflexes up to 14 before we get that, but that we already own as well. But as soon as you get reflexes up to uh, 14, equip that and you'll have 2.5 seconds of bullet time. All right, so that's that done. And I think that's about it. I was looking at my list here. Uh, fortified ankles. I got this earlier. I talked about that. This is optional. This doesn't really like, you know, have anything to do with a comrade's hammer build, but this is incredibly useful for getting around. It's, it's pretty expensive, but I would get that or either that or reinforced tendons. I think, um, fortified ankles is much better. Oh, and, um, if we can afford it. projectile launch system yeah definitely 15,000 yeah we got the money let's buy that this is like your like I said your backup weapon and right now it does explosive damage we're gonna have to back out What you want is the tranquilizer rounds, which can be had. Who has those? Let me just look at my notes here. It's the Ripper Dock in Haywood. That guy right there. We were right there. Let's go back and get it. Let me just double check here. Pretty sure I got everything. It was a bazillion. I could like, you know, I literally have rough estimate about 75 pages of notes on Cyberpunk 2077. Easy. Easy. And no, I'm not writing an ebook. I'm sorry, I don't have time. Back to Palm View Plaza. This should put the finishing touch. If you are not following my multi-build power start, I also have another video that I put out just before this one about improving your armor. Because right now my armor rating is 1333 which is plenty for moderate and high rated jobs for very high it's not enough you, you're gonna get you need to toast it pretty much right away but with the comrades hammer if you learn to use cover well um, it's not gonna matter here we're going for that guy right there This guy right here, Doc Ryder. Great. So, as I was saying... You mind taking a look at my chrome? Sure. Make yourself... Okay, and let's look here. Go to trade. And... Nope. Nope. Bingo. It's only 540 bucks, too. What's this? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, get that sucker. This is also great for cyber psycho sightings. Psycho cyber is cyber psycho. Anyways, you know those missions where you have to go in and there's like this guy going absolutely apeshit and you have to knock him out. You can't kill him. This is perfect for that. Plus, it's a way better round to use in your um, in your projectile launcher than the art than the default 
explosive. So let's just swap that out. There we go. Tranquilizer rounds. Now you're all set up. Now you're all set up. Okay, there's your starter comrades hammer build with a single comrades hammer. Shouldn't I make two more? It's like you well, you could. I would recommend that you wait. Right now, your priority, priority number one, if you've been following this walkthrough carefully and you're all out of attribute points and perk points, your priority number one is to get body up to six. I highly recommend that. That's your very first priority. So you're going to want to get um, from level 16 up to level 19 to get three or more attribute points, get body up to six, and then you'll be able to fire your comrade's hammer from cover. Next, yeah, let me just, you know, explain to you what you're going to do from this point on. I'm just going to leave you hanging. Um, next, after that, let me go back to my notes here. Level 21, assuming that you're following this walkthrough, 16 to 19, you get body at, at uh, 6. Uh, go up to level 21, that's two more attribute points. That would give you tech 14. Okay, put two points into tech. And that would allow you to get two key crafting perks. One is... This one here. Cost optimization. Reduces the component cost of crafting items by 15%. And the other one, let there be light. This one here reduces the component cost of upgrading items by 10%. If you put two perks in, it'll be 20%. Likewise, this, if you put two perks in, it'll be 25%. So that's what you're saving up for. Those two perks right there. So once you get technical ability up to 14, that's when I would craft two more comrades hammers to have your triple threat comrades hammer build right after that you're going to push further to tech 16 and at tech 16 you can get um, a very important perk waste not want not when disassembling an item you can get all attached mods back which means that you can start um, getting better armor because once you find better armor you could just disassemble your old, old armor and get all your rare armadillo mods back which is going to be a lot easier and a lot less tedious than crafting new ones because you know it's the same deal with crafting rare armadillo mods you're going to get seven percent or even as low as five percent but you know depending on your on your mileage your mileage may vary all right so that's where you do level 23 and level 25 this is your keep pushing points into technical ability after you get body up to six, keep pushing all those points into technical ability. Once you get uh, tech up to 18, you can get edge runner artisan. At that point, you can start crafting legendary comrades hammers. Now, let me explain something else as well. As you're power leveling up, and once again, like I said, the first thing you should do as you're power leveling with your comrades hammers, go to city center and find all those jobs all these very high jobs start doing them all all these scanner hustle jobs all of them there's tons of them they're all rated very high okay find yourself some good cover in those jobs mow them down and collect the goodies and um xp and street cred and you're going to level up a lot like that and um as you're doing all that also there's side jobs here too same deal they're all rated high very high very high very high and so on and so forth do all those jobs you're gonna make a ton of money ton of ton of xp ton of street cred and you're gonna level up fast a lot faster than if you do the main missions because as you may or may not know main missions are full of just a metric ton of dialogue and there's just not much combat if you like look at you know your xp gain as like xp per minute <laughs> you're gonna make a lot more xp per minute doing all these side jobs then you are going to do the main jobs even if the main jobs give you a lot more xp finally you know like some some of you like nine thousand xp but like after you plow through all that dialogue it, you know in my opinion it's better to do all these missions anyways back to what i was saying as you're leveling up do not i repeat do not freaking upgrade your comrade's hammer just do it the one time 
all right you're going to spend a ton of components trying to upgrade your comments hammer when in fact it's just easier to make a new one so wait until you get to a key level for example um once i got to uh the point where i was going to craft three comrades hammers that's when i made like a whole new batch of comrades hammers and i did not only made an extra two but i made another one to replace my original one okay so that's one time where you make it a batch of comrades hammers and then when you get technical ability up to 18 that's where you're going to make a batch of legendary comrades hammers and that's it don't upgrade in between because it's going to waste a it's going to be way more expensive upgrading than it is to just make brand new ones the only advantage that you'll have upgrading your original comrades hammer is you won't have to re-roll to get the best stats that's the only advantage but other than that it's way more expensive to upgrade than to just simply make new ones all right and keep in mind that as you're crafting your legendaries you're going to need the epics the original epics okay here's the legendary recipe see that one of the ingredients for the legendary comrades hammer is an epic comrades hammer doesn't it have to be the best one could be anyone but it has you have to have one all right so keep that in mind don't trash your old comrades hammers when you're upgrading from epic to legendary all right and i think that about covers everything that's a long video but yeah there is so much information um i hope i got it all i've got like my notes are a bit of a mess um net or rather quick hacking the only quick hack you're going to need is ping that's the only one you're going to need because um all you want to do is know where the enemies are so what you're going to do basically let me just quickly is there a uh, yeah there's this guy right here this is your procedure when you go into combat okay here we go we're in an enemy area I don't even do breach protocol because as long as you can afford ping that's the only quick hack you're gonna do so basically find an enemy do ping back off got everybody pinged scan zoom in tag everybody tag tag I think I lost that guy. Anyways, assuming that... Oh, there we go. Tag. There we go. They're all tagged. That's it. That's the... Oh, here's two more. Whoops. This guy's just too peering on it. Tag. Should be one more there. The game's messing around with me. Anyways, once you got them all tagged, or as many as you can, that's it. That's all you're going to do. That's the only quick hack you're going to do. It's a very fast-paced gameplay. I mean, you could throw in some, you know, weapon glitch and crippled movement, but I find it just it just slows everything down. Your your comrade's hammer is going to take care of them all easy as pie. Why, why bother with weapon glitch, you know, or anything like that? I mean, you just one-shot them. Actually, that's a poor... A poor example because this is an outdoor location and this uh, does not offer much cover you're gonna to have to really work hard to find cover outdoor locations are not really the best um, something I forgot when you create your first batch of triple comrades hammers another perk that is really important is this one this is a perk that I previously thought was completely freaking useless because I was thinking why would you need to draw your pistol faster if you're do using a pistol build and you pretty much have it out all the time why but but if you create three comrades hammers you'll be able to swap out your comrades hammer a lot faster i'm going to show you that um when i show you like a little in a few minutes when i show you my uh, legendary build and i talk about the perks that are a complete waste but yeah definitely get this i'll show you that in a minute um let me just uh show you another location which demonstrates uh your your strategy just some basics about strategies combat strategies like i said you're going to start in city center and start working on all those very high jobs those very valuable lucrative high paying jobs 
Let's go there right now. Arisaka Tower, everybody's got that location discovered by default as soon as you get attacked too. With your fledgling comrades hammer build, you, you're basically looking for cover. Every location you're scoping out for cover. Because that's your Achilles heel. You can kick ass, but they can kick your ass. So here in the Arisaka Tower, just turn to the right and go down this way. And we're going for this assault progress right here. As you see, it's marked very high. Let me just get rid of that uh, side job GPS. How you go? Yet another media killed herself. Screen sheets are saying it was work-related stress, but our folks are calling foul play. So, think you can pick something up? Got more deeds attached. Okay, if that's for another side job, that's not this one. That's something else. It's this one right here. But we're going for this one. This assault in progress right here. Okay. This is our fledgling build. This is what you do basically every single combat encounter. Go for ping first. You could sometimes ping is really, really expensive. You may want to go to for breach protocol just to drop the cost. But uh, mostly I just go straight for ping. Get their location. Wait for him to get pinged. Okay, now they're all highlighted. Scan, zoom in, tag them all. Tag, 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 tag. Now if you get a clean shot on these guys, we can one-shot them all. It's just a matter of staying in cover. And we won't be able to shoot from a crouch position. What you're going to do is just use the ground here as cover. When it's like, you know, you have to improvise a lot of the time. If there's no walls or anything, just use whatever you can. They never come up the stairs here. Okay, so just use the ground for cover. Always shoot for the stationary guy. They're gonna start running around as soon as you start firing. So here we go, let's go for that guy, crouch down. Didn't get him because we didn't get penetration. Occasionally that happens, wait for this. Here we go. One shot it, no problem. That guy's crouched down, let's go for him. Two down. That guy's crouched down right there. It's three down. And wait for him to plant. He stops, he plants, fire. Didn't get penetration. Occasionally that happens. And that's four down. And we have another one who wandered in. He's not part of the same, but let's wait for him to plant. Use the ground as cover. Here he comes. And he's down. Wait a minute, we should have one more here. This is unusual. If you run out of enemies and you can't find the last guy, a good thing to do is switch over to recon grenades. Okay, throw one of these out, and that will reveal anybody who's left. And there we go, there he is right there. And that's it. We're still in combat, so there may be one over there. Nope. There we go. Somebody over there, but he, he's part of another. Anyways, in here is always the Panacea. There it is right there. The Panacea crafting spec. It's always there. It allows you to craft a mod that will give you immunity to poison and shock at the same time. Really good. It's always here. Let's grab that. And as see, we leveled up already. 2600. 266 experience and a ton of street cred and we're on our way this guy gave up something epic okay so same deal in other situations when you're going into a building like it's let's say the um the job is in a building a great place to take cover is in a bathroom or a closet because you got walls on all sides and you got a choke point they can only come in through the only come in through the uh, the choke point oh this guy over here Wait for him to plant. He's not even like. Okay, there we go. And I've excited these guys. These guys are part of another. Um... Oh, 
they're actually part of that job that Dino just gave us. here so I'm gonna get out of here like I said when you're in the open and they they start flanking you it gets pretty tough to find cover especially when you can't crouch yet that's why crouching is like top priority you got to be able to crouch while you're shooting And he's down. These guys are dropping some legendary item components. There's a good example of how much damage they can do to you. They can really, pardon my French, fuck you up. So that's why you gotta take cover when you're taking on these very high jobs. You can kick butt, but so can they. Okay, so there's a quick tutorial on combat strategy. Next, I'm gonna load up my legendary level 31 and just talk about a few perks that are a complete waste. Okay, here's my level 31 Comrade's Hammer run and um, as you can see I've got all legendaries, three legendaries. At level 31 the chances of crafting an epic pacifier are a paltry 2%. I tested this on hundreds upon hundreds of pacifier mods and this is the first level that you can actually start creating epics and it's a paltry 2%. It's ridiculous. You have to create a hundred just to get two. So to to fill up one comrade's hammer with epics, you're gonna have to create around 200 um, pacifier mods just to get four epics. So that's why I only have like one of them. This is like my super kick, but you know, legendary and the others just have rares they'll have to wait until I level up and get a better chance of creating um, epics but that's uh, beside the point the point is handgun perks that are completely useless here are pretty much filled up everything that I want to get um, like I said earlier get the on fly on the fly perk reduces draw and holster time for pistols and revolvers by 50% but also reduces swap time watch how fast I can swap See? I can swap so fast that it often screws up my ability to holster my weapon, which is the same button. You just press the swap button twice, you double tap it. And <laughs> see that? I'm swapping so fast that the game cannot register the input. So now I have to really double tap really quick in order to holster my weapon. Okay, so that's what you're going to use. Fire, swap, fire, swap, fire. It's so great. It kicks so much ass. I'm so surprised that nobody talks about that. Triple comrades hammers. Um, next. This here, I didn't talk about this. Deal 50% more damage with pistols and revolvers. When you get up to this point where you're you're crafting legendaries and using legendaries, you're gonna one-shot everything. Uh, but for boss enemies, uh, you probably want this. It's only one perk. As you can see here, I still haven't thrown any perks into real Bravo. I just don't think I just don't see the point. Because headshot damage is like it's way out the charts. I'm sitting there going, what do, what do you need more headshot damage for? Also, if you notice, all my um all my comrades hammer already have at least four headshot damage multiplier. And this is something I haven't been able to figure out yet. I, I've noticed that when you get up to legendary, your equipped legendary comrades hammer always has a little bit of a headshot damage multiplier bonus. I still haven't figured out where that's coming from. But yeah, that's another thing I noticed. These two legendary comrades hammer they were originally at three headshot damage multiplier as soon as they upgraded they went up to four so getting four headshot damage multiplier on legendaries is pretty easy and that's because this one is even 4.4 so adding on like 0.3 to that i just don't see the point it's like yeah whatever 
you know, even though perk points are a dime a dozen, I just don't, I don't see the point of spending those perk points there. You, you may, you know, think differently, you know, each to his own, but I don't think it's worth it. Vanishing points simply doesn't work. Um, evasion increases by 25% for six seconds after performing a dodge. That's all you have to do is perform a dodge. And evasion is basically your ability to, uh, vo like, avoid shots. The higher your evasion, the harder it is for the enemy to hit you. You can see your evasion by just simply going to uh, stats, then click on armor, and there's your evasion right there. It simply doesn't work. Nothing that you, like any evasion bonus that you see in the game, you get it and it doesn't work. It doesn't show up here. It's simply broken. I'm going to show you that right now. Let's do a quick save here. Let's get this perk. Okay, so we got the vanishing point perk. As soon as we increase... Gee, I wonder if it's like means like increase 25%. So it's like, it's 25% of one. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, no, I've done, I've tested this with other sources of evasion and nothing seems to, nothing seems to affect that stat. And I've Googled it and other people have, have said the same thing. Okay, um, just to prove I'm dodging, uh, Kariznikov always kicks in when I dodge if I'm um, aiming so there definitely dodging for six seconds I should see something still one it's always one evasion is broken it's completely broken don't do it don't don't waste your time don't waste your prick points on that it's broken everything that you try to do to increase your evasion doesn't work it's broken Correct me if I'm wrong. Next. Attritional fire. People have tested this. I have tested this too. Firing consecutive shots with a pistol or revolver at the same target increases damage by 10%. I've tested this too. It doesn't work. Acrobat. You can now perform dodges while aiming a pistol or revolver. You don't need this. It's completely redundant because you have a Kariznikov. Kariznikov does the same thing. Kariznikov. Anyways, whatever. Um, <laughs> Cyberware. Karinzikov. Yeah. You can already do this. So you don't need that. This is redundant. After a successful hit shot with a pistol or revolver, crit chance increases by 25% for 5 seconds. Our crit chance is already maxed out. Even if I was going to rely on this and not use other sources of crit chance. Um, I don't like the idea that it only lasts for five seconds, you know, so I would never go for this. This, I didn't talk about this. I've checked, like, there's people have done, like, extensive testing on all the perks. And the, they say what works and what doesn't work. According to other people, this works. According to me. It doesn't work. I don't see any difference whatsoever. But I'm just getting it because other people say it works. But I've tested this. I can't see any difference whatsoever. Removes damage penalty from pistols and revolvers when shooting from a distance. I don't see any difference. But I, you know, your call. I, I don't think it works, but I get it anyways. <laughs> um, because other people say it works. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, Westworld, I already covered this. If you want to save some perk points, wait for this. And you can save a couple perk points, but whatever, you know. After defeating an enemy, fire rate for pistols and revolvers increases by 5% for 6 seconds, stacks up to 5 times. Doesn't apply because um, the Comrade's Hammer only has one in the clip, so there's there's no such thing as fire rate with the Comrade's Hammer. Lead Sponge enables you to... This is also covered by Karinzikov. You can already do this, so there's no point in getting this. And this... According to a couple of people who have extensively tested all the perks, this just simply doesn't work. So that's that's pretty much everything. Um, a 
couple of things I did here that I didn't cover. Oh yeah, right. I was struggling to see a difference that field technician and cutting edge made when I was crafting. But other people say they work. These perks work, so I got them anyways. But I was struggling to see a difference. You probably want to get those just in case um, before you craft your legendary batch of comrades hammers. This I got um, because I was just fooling around trying to get max stocks to be 25% better and I finally figured out it doesn't do anything to that. All it does is increases the you can see it right here when you eat food for example where's the hot dog here's an example the <laughs> right here hot dog okay the duration here for this hot dog for the nourishment status which is actually pretty good I do this all the time eat food all the time it's supposed to last for 450 seconds instead if you use that perk it will increase the duration according to how much so if you got two perks in um, that perk, it would increase it from 450 to 675 seconds. That's exactly what it would do. Other than that, it doesn't make healing potions better, unfortunately. A couple of things here I got in athletics. Because I had body at six, I figured why not. Um, get this one here invincible increase max health by 30% and this one health slowly regenerates during combat this may seem like it's not working but it does it's just that it only increases health during combat up to 60% of your maximum health after that it stops that's that's the cap so if you're wondering why it's not working that's probably why but it does act I've seen it work in combat if you're below 60% your health will slowly increase back up to 60% during combat, which is really useful, especially when you take on those um, very high jobs and you're you're a little underpowered when it comes to armor. This I got to, you know, obviously for reasons, you know, just to speed up the gameplay, you know, like you're gonna be, now your business model is looting instead of access points. So I figured, hey, extra 60 carrying capacity, definitely. And I think that pretty much covers everything. Yeah, it pretty much covers everything. So that's it. That's your ultimate. See, I'm trying to put away my weapon now. Go. There we go. Okay. That's your ultimate comrade's hammer strategy guide. So I'm done here. I want to thank you very much for watching. Have fun. Make yourself a kick ass triple comrade's hammer build and get up there and kick some ass. Yeah. So thanks a lot for watching. And if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel stuff like that there and i'll see you next time for some more cyberpunk 2077 yeah all right see you next time hey guys real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on youtube for a complete lowdown on the youtube video game walkthrough scene check out my patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly major slack to help keep real walkthroughs alive on youtube you can donate as little as one dollar that's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, all right? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.